announcement. This was a video that struck us because it's by someone who had been working as a uh, voting observer. And, and let's look at what she has to say. Now, Anastasia, I want to bring this to you. She's saying that they want to have these peaceful protests, but why now? I mean, these, we haven't seen protests of this magnitude, as you mentioned, since the fall of the Soviet Union. What do you think is motivating people? Um, I think that at this point, there is a really strong middle urban class that has formed and has some understanding of what's going on in other countries in Europe, what's going on in other democracies. The economic situation, as you mentioned, for some residents of large urban cities due to Putin policies or due to the improvement in economics in Russia has changed and people can afford to travel abroad and they see how it works in other countries. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the tipping point for the people this, um, this winter or this fall specifically was that they saw the falsifications, mm -hmm. they saw how uh, the switch between Putin and Medvedev was done, and they felt that everything was decided for them instead of mm -hmm. by them or with them. And that brought them to the streets. They're not um, bringing in any um, new ideas. They want the decisions to be made by them. They want to formulate where they want to go from this point. They want to formulate uh, what their country will be. They want to do it themselves. And I think that the fact that um, first Putin and Medvedev made the decision that Putin will be running for the president, uh, there was no genuine discussion. It was just the announcement, basically, mm -hmm. well, here, take it. And um, then the elections where people saw that, in fact, there were some falsification. Um, Actually, I want to get in there because uh, it's interesting, Derek, you showed that video and the woman, the lady, was carrying white flowers. But we've also seen images like this and the term white ribbon being shared on Twitter and many other social media platforms. You see a young girl using white ribbon as kind of a, a symbol of, I guess, you know, opposition. Now, we have a question about the white ribbons, and I'm going to put this one to you, Jeff. So let's take a listen. This is from Tall's Dog. The symbol that some the symbol that some of the protesters use is the white ribbon. Uh, the website for the white ribbon, BLA um, it's listed as being created in October 2011. Uh, do you think this means that the protest movement was pre-planned way in the head of the actual elections? And what would have been their motivations in doing so? Jeffrey? Well, I mean, it, it depends what you really mean by the protest movement. I mean, I think, you know, Anastasia is right that since the, announce, the announcement that Putin would be returning to power, there's been a kind of swelling of discontent. Mm -hmm. And you've had people looking for, you know, ways of, of expressing that discontent. Now, you know, I don't think that means that necessarily there is practical coordination for, you know, if the election goes like this, we're going to do this. But I think there has been this kind of, of cresting wave of, discontent that's been building up over the last couple of months and so certainly there's a prehistory here it's not like you know it was just this uh, falsified election that actually set off the discontent it was something that had been building up for a while so premeditated and perhaps social media was used to mobilize some of the organization of the protest yeah I mean the role of social media in the protest has been interesting I mean on the one hand it's been used to document some of these abuses which have then fed um, the protests have fed on the discontent, but as we've seen in other parts of the world this year, especially in the Arab world, it's also used as a mobilization tool. It's a way for people to link up, to get the message out, um, and to coordinate things across, you know, widely spaced well, parts of the country. It's also